All right, guys, this is your guy LP, and I'm coming to you today talking about a Whirlpool double oven. I've had several of these that have uh, went out. Mostly, we've had issues with the uh, front thermal fuse right there by the control panel right in the front. Uh, so we keep those on the truck now. But on this double oven, it had a different issue. It was a little strange. Both ovens turned on so the bottom oven worked properly the top oven only went to about 270 degrees the customer stated when i got to the house i checked it i got it up to about 200 and that was in the, over the course of about five minutes i could feel the heat from the bottom uh heating element i did not have any faults on the uh, control board when I went into diagnostic mode. So uh, I turned it on broil. I didn't get any power from the broil element at all. I didn't get any uh, power there for as it didn't heat. So what I did next, I took out multimeter and I hooked up my alligator clamps to it, then hooked those to my multimeter leads. I was not getting the 120 on each side I got about 56 uh, volts out of that total so I know I knew that I had some type of problem with the uh, voltage coming in my thermal fuse in the front we normally just cut off the control board where you couldn't do anything no lights nothing so I knew that had to be good so in my mind as I'm thinking okay these are really pretty basic you know, you're going to have your uh, thermal fuse, then you're going to have your high limit switch on the back. And then you're going to have the user interface board and you're going to have the control board. I'm getting power all the way down to my bottom oven, the lower oven, top oven, no broil at all, 56 volts. And then the bottom oven is working, but it doesn't seem to be working properly if I can only get up to 270. Even in that preheat mode even though i would think both elements would come on if i uh, chose that option on this whirlpool even if i didn't i still should be able to reach 350 degrees just using one element yes it would take a little bit longer because it's not using the uh, both of them to heat up faster but i should still get the uh, 350 degrees relatively quickly and easily so I know my high limit switch is working. I am getting power on that bottom oven. There's only one high limit switch on this. Uh, I know my control panel is working. So my thermal fuse is working. If that was pop, I would not get any, uh, any lights on the user interface or inside the oven. So I know that has to be working. So now I have a relay board and I have the user interface. User interface, I can get into all my settings. I can check everything. I can uh, change the degrees. Everything seems to be working just fine on that user interface board. Nothing is out of the ordinary. All right. User interface board was on back order, and it's about 550 bucks. Stainless steel comes the whole assembly. Relay board, they have one. They have one in Macomb. I had to order it out of Macomb, Dallas. You can't pick up. They have to ship it one day. Uh, if it comes from Albany or anywhere else, it never makes it on time. If they have it in stock in Dallas, it is one day. So the next day, I will have the board UPS ground. So yes. So relay board is what I ordered. Uh, so I wanted to uh, go back next time with the board. I did quote the customer blue book price uh, we charged him $89 service call contacted the customer set up an appointment got back over there Saturday morning we needed to use our hydraulic lift to pull out this oven it's a big double oven so you have to have a lift to get this out I mean I, you definitely wouldn't want to set this on the floor if you had uh, two people so make sure you have the tools to do this uh, relatively simple uh, you take out the four screws that holds it in shimmy it out till we get get it going then we can pull it straight out onto the lift I did take the bottom door out to give me a little more uh, 
room with my lift in there. I didn't want my lift to uh, rub up against it at any time. And uh, to help me get my hands around and pull from the bottom versus pulling on the top. So I did pull off that bottom door. It's relatively simple. Taking off a uh, oven door, just let it down, move the two latches back, and then pull it out. Did that. So uh, on these photos that you're going to see here, this is with me having the oven out. I pull the uh, double oven out, set it on my lift, and turn it around. So now what I'm going to do before I turn the power off, I'm going to put my leads on the back. And uh, I'm going to show you the uh, the uh, the voltage. I had my uh, vote. I mean, my multimeter set on uh, volts 600, and I hooked up my alligator clips and uh, to each lead on the uh, the bake element down at the bottom. And uh, you'll see it has zero, but then it clicked over and it gave me 242 volts. So it, it gave me 242 volts. Uh, these were relatively short. They clicked on, and you could tell the relay was opening and closing. So it was about 10 seconds on, and then it was off for about 25 seconds, 10 seconds on, and off for about uh, 20 seconds. So it was trying to heat up, but it wasn't given enough power to uh, to actually heat up to the appropriate temperature quick enough. We went to the brawl element and we had zero across the board. We didn't get any of the, uh, any voltage. So we knew we had a problem there. From there, we felt very confident with our choice of having the relay board. And um, we proceeded to take, take the uh, appropriate covers off the top and uh, get to the relay board. You'll see the relay board. We took photos of it to make sure that we knew exactly where the connectors went, even though the connectors were uh, pretty well color-coded on, on the right side and on the left side there. Uh, they just have the uh, prongs that go in, so you want to make sure you know exactly where they're going. But the, uh, the wiring is in such a way that it, it really only leads it to go in one direction there. So we got that together, took it off, put it on, and uh, everything went back to normal. Warmed up, was kicking out the right voltage. We checked it again with our alligator clips, and uh, everything was working properly. We showed the customer. We took our infrared thermometer inside, well, pointed inside, and we, uh, we showed the customer. They were happy. Make sure that you on that control board, that relay board, make sure that you are uh you put that screw back in. If you don't, the uh control board will stick up higher. It has two little feet that it slides in and then in the front it has the uh screw that you screw down and unscrew to take it out. Make sure that you are putting that screw back in. We forgot that, had one screw left over, had to take the top back off and put it on. You want to make sure you're doing a good job for the tech worksheet here, the schematic. So I put it off inside of here, took a couple photos and dropped it in here if you need it. 